everybody. Happy Friday. So this morning was weird. This morning was very weird. Oh, yeah. I need this. This morning was very weird. I woke up. I woke up, right? To the beep, 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 beep of the, like the fire alarm where I live. And I was like, there is not a fire in my building. I refuse to believe this. So I like slowly got up. I like made a cup of coffee. <laughs> I ate a mush. <laughs> I just put my headphones in and I walked out like 10 minutes later and everyone outside was like, I didn't, I didn't get it. There was no fire. There was no fire. False alarm, everybody. False alarm. Um, happy Friday morning. Excited to be here. Feeling a lot better today. Uh, yesterday, uh, as you can probably tell, there was no live stream yesterday. And that's because I felt completely terrible. I woke up with like a migraine and I had no idea why. And then Jay change was like, do you have allergies? And I was like, Oh, that makes so much sense. I had no idea why I felt so bad. And I still don't feel the best, but I wanted the live stream today. I, I didn't, I didn't want to just be blah. I just wanted to get up and go. So, you know, you know what it is. Um, I do appreciate all of you being here already. I already got almost 50 people in the house. Thank you. you guys are awesome. Shout out to everybody in the chat, the Davenport report. We have the glitter queen. We have Crypto G, SWFL Crypto, Connor Lang, Eddie C, S Dog, uh, Brandon Jolly, and my best friend in the whole wide world, Chauncey. Chauncey Peppertooth. Chauncey and I are going to um, we're going to make a, a a meme coin on Solana called P Tooth. Okay, uh, and then we're going to rug everybody. We're going to blame it on Ben and retire. That that's that's it. That's it. No more Telegram. No more. Uh, no more live streams, just just P tooth rug retire. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. Rolling off into the sunset. There it is. I absolutely love it. All right. Um, uh, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate your prayers. Chauncey and I, we are out. We're done. <laughs> Call it a day. I absolutely love it. I love that so much. All right. Um, all right. So much to talk about. So much to talk about. Yesterday was a little bit crazy. Um I, I might be buying a new bike here soon. Very excited about, about the new bike. Can't wait to show you guys pictures of it. Uh, I might go get it this weekend. Not sure. Not sure. Maybe maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Time will tell. All right. A um, couple things. A couple things I want to catch everybody up on before we get into the market and all that. First of all, let me share this tab instead and pull this bad boy down. Where's the, where's the button I like? There it is. All right. Put this tweet out yesterday. Uh, I'm telling you all, telling you don't sleep on the RWA narrative. Everything will be tokenized in the next five to seven years, which is completely true. I saw this one chart that, um, before I get into this, that said, like, right now, the uh, everything tokenized and the market cap of everything tokenized in Bitcoin is less than 300 million. And by 2030, it's going to be like 30 trillion or something crazy like that. And, um, and it is true. I, I don't know if that was the exact number. I might be over over um, throwing that, but it is true that you know everything will be tokenized in, in the next uh, you know maybe even less than five to seven years. Uh, and this is why I'm big on a lot of projects because of the RWA narrative. And also shout out to Lingo Coins, uh, one of the one of the um, I am a KOL for Lingo Coins, one of the sponsors of the channel. What they're doing is pretty legit, and they have some pretty sweet airdrops coming for everybody. Definitely make sure you guys check out uh, Lingo Coins. Uh, they're like, you know, doing this whole like gamified, like task type thing coming pretty soon. And uh, I mean, it, it's going to be a, a lot of pretty good airdrops for people. So I wanted to fill you guys in on that, get some free stuff. Um, also, 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 we have a um, couple, couple giveaways that I have going that are still open. Wanted to fill you all in on this. Uh, so right uh, on April 3rd, uh, which day is April 3rd? I forget. Uh, yeah, next Wednesday. I will be interviewing the C the co-founder and CEO of the H Bar Foundation, Shane Higdon. So I did a little tweet here. If you could ask him anything, what would it be? And the winner gets a hundred dollars in H Bar, and I will use their question and give them credit for that question in the interview. This is still open. If you are an H Barbarian and you have a good question, you would like to ask the CEO and co-founder of the H Bar Foundation. You are more than welcome to go over to that tweet. Uh, maybe smash the like, maybe give it a retweet and uh, yo, and submit your question in the comments. And, you know, maybe you could win $100 in HBAR and get your name mentioned in the interview. So I'm doing that for everybody. I like doing those in 
those types of ideas in uh, my larger interviews. You know, I have been uh, pretty notorious. You know, this is a smaller channel. It is a smaller crypto channel. And it's because it just got started. You know, we just really got the ball rolling November of last year. It's still March this year. and It hasn't really been that long. And I'm very proud of the progress I made. I'm very proud of the core audience I have that's here every day. Like, um, you know, the Karen Harris's Davenport Report, Marsh, Brian Bootyhead, Crypto Ohioan, uh, Sean C, S-Dog. I mean, you all are here every day. And I have an amazing core audience. And I'm super, super proud of that. And, you know, I, I always want to, um, you know, give back to the people that care and i really like doing giveaways for everybody and you know and since the beginning of this channel i've been notorious for landing some pretty big interviews uh you know started off with like uh with lehman baird the guy who created the hash graph on hbar you know i've interviewed john allen woods from algorand i've interviewed stacy i interviewed min from algorand uh, all really big people and the next interview that i have coming is a pretty big one it is going to come out on saturday uh where is it where is there it is right here okay and this is also uh you know some more giveaway ideas here my in-person interview in back in miami for ufc 299 i interviewed the founder of v chain sunny lou super cool guy uh got the edit from my editor diamond hand yesterday he did a really amazing job editing the video shout out to diamond and um and may I think I am going to do like a vet giveaway and maybe some merch giveaways. I have some. Uh, here we go. Here we go. I, I do have some extra. I have some sweet extra V chain hats laying around. I have some some V chain shirts, uh, V chain passport keys. I, I have so many little things from V chain along that I've gathered along the way from uh, going to the fights and everything. And they are going to help with the giveaways as well. So um, you know, stay tuned for that when I promote the video that comes out uh, tomorrow. Yeah, the video comes out tomorrow. I will be doing a, a, a awesome vet giveaway uh, to help promote the video. So be sure to get involved in that. And big sh shout out to VChain. I will be attending UFC 300 in Las Vegas here in a couple of weeks with the VChain team. Uh, super excited for that. And, um, and a shout out to, to Sonny Lou for doing the interview with me. It was really, really cool to uh to talk to sonny hang out with him i mean he's og crypto guy way back 2011 type crypto guy uh you know has, has been he we had a conversation about his friendship with cz over the years that started you know over a decade ago you know what i mean i mean he's cool as they come cool as they come and really the the push that v chain is doing uh with sustainability not only is going to help the visibility of the project over the next couple of years, but it's it's also the right thing to do. So uh, I, you know, I standing ovation for V Chain and uh, absolutely amazing team, and I'm super excited for you guys to watch that interview. I asked the dude. I came out the gate with like a tough question for Sunny. He kind of looked at me like, okay, it, it's going to be like that. You know, I think that's why I get so many interviews like with founders of blockchain CEOs and everything like that because if if they've seen me interview someone before, they're going to know that I'm going to ask those tough questions that the audience wants to know and like things that get rumored or things that may be true, might not be true. Uh, I always ask about marketing, which is a tough thing for blockchains because people want that hype. You know, people want that excitement. And I'll just be like, hey, like, what's your marketing push? You know, like, what, what are you actually doing? Like, yeah, like you last bull run, your market cap was, let's just say, I'm just making up a number. Last last bull run, your market cap was 50 billion. Right now, your market cap six billion. What gets you back? What gets you back there? You know what I mean? I'll ask those tough questions, and I and I really think that's why I keep landing these really uh, big, amazing interviews. So yeah, uh, yeah. Big shout out to Sunny Lou. The interview will come out tomorrow, and I will have a merch and vet giveaway attached to it. Shout out to uh, Jacob Burgess. Uh, put a tweet out for me here. Uh, talking about you know want a big trade here in the Telegram group on a little Python scalp short that I posted. Shout out to him. Um, not going to talk too much about the Telegram group, but it has been going well. If you want to get involved in the Telegram group, send me an email at ajalphagroup at gmail.com. We'll get you signed up, start your winning trades. Um, uh, I am doing another, I did uh, the round table yesterday, despite feeling terrible, but it was at 2 p.m. So I kind of got through it. I have another round table today with Mario and the team over there at Mario Nafal. Uh, big shout out to Mario. Super cool guy. We chat every now and then. 
And, uh, you know, I think working with Mario over the past, uh, I don't know, five months now, I've worked with Mario, done a lot of spaces with Mario. I, I, co I co-host the round table a lot. Uh, it just really opens up, you know, the brand, you know, it, it really gives me an extra layer of visibility that, you know, some people don't have access to. And, uh, you know, you want to align yourself with, you know, the biggest people in the space. And I feel like, you know, I've done a good job doing that. And I'm super grateful for Mario and the team over there. They're, they're cool as they come. They really are. And then this giveaway here is still alive and well uh, for the Femex um, tutorial. I will copy and paste this one in the chat here. Copy, paste, boom. Right, let me scroll down. All right, so let me go. So I do. I did do a Femex tutorial for how to leverage trade on Femex and how to fund your leverage trade account as well. How to set stop losses, how to do take profits, all that good stuff. Um, you know, I, I am I am backed by Femex. I best exchange in crypto. Super easy, uh, comprehensive to leverage trade on Femex and. Uh, two people who like and retweet this tweet here to promote the video will will win a hundred dollars in the PT token. So you know there is an an open giveaway that I'll probably close that giveaway on Sunday uh, for anybody who wants a chance to win a hundred dollars in PT. All you have to do is like and retweet this tweet right here uh, for your chance to get that in. So so there you go. Uh, big shout out to sponsor of the channel Femex. Oh, also also gotta gotta plug the merch here. One sec. Fresh to death. Fresh to death. I really like this hoodie, by the way. And they sent me a bag of coffee. And I can't even read anything on the bag of coffee. It's just a, a bag of coffee in a language I don't understand, but it is some good stuff. Big shout out to Sergio over at Femex for the uh for the little box there. You guys rock. Um is the glitter queen talking about my 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 motorcycle in the chat? Do I have to do I have to show you guys? Do I? Do I really have to show you guys? All right, fine. Um, all right. Boom. Oh, oh, I almost got it. There she is. Let me uh, click this over here. Boom. There it is. There's that bad boy. Not bad at all. I'm really big into motocross. You all know this. I grew up racing dirt bikes my entire life. I'm real big into supercross. I'm even a, uh, a contributor to Racer X magazine every now and then. I've been writing some articles for Racer X. Um, that's a really big deal if you're in the motocross world. And I had a, I had, I still have a DRZ 400, which is kind of like, and it's like an enduro off-road bike. You know, it's like a dirt bike that's street legal, basically. Okay, it's sort of like a supermoto, and basically like with a harley or like a ninja or a hibusa or whatever uh you know if someone cuts you off you can't jump over the ditch and rip through the cornfield and ride through the trails and all this other stuff with this bike it's street legal but it still rips on a dirt bike track like a motocross track you could ride this bike it has like a motocross suspension it's basically the ktm 450 uh with a larger gas tank uh a different gearbox uh, and and the same suspension so this thing is super sweet and uh, you know, it's just a little bit more agile, a little bit faster, better suspension than the bike I have now. And I've been wanting one for a while. I've been wanting one for a while. I'm going to trade my DRZ in and then, you know, pay it off over three years. So it's not like it's a big giant dent. Uh, but, you know, I want something a little bit, a little bit faster, a little bit more fun, a little bit safer as well. So I'm excited about that. So super, super cool. The cup and handle follow up is coming very soon. I filmed it once. Excuse me, I filmed it twice already and it hasn't come out. I'll tell you why. The first time I filmed it, the market dumped as I was editing editing it. And it does not make sense to put a video out about cup and handles with the dumping market if some of them get invalidated. One. The second time I filmed it, the footage got corrupted because my laptop, I need to get my laptop fixed. I need to take it to Apple because when I record on OBS, if my if I film for three minutes and stop the recording, it will show up normally. But if I film for four minutes, it corrupts the file. And I'll, and I'll, re, and I'll st stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Big headache to edit the video. But then say I do, I have, you know, the one video consists of six clips and I don't realize that the third clip is corrupted, the whole video is screwed. 
So uh, stuff like that has been really unfortunate. I actually have pivoted to how I'm doing pre-recorded videos to right here on Streamlab, uh, on how, StreamYard, on how I do these videos here. So uh, that video is coming. Uh, Clay, Clay to the great, AJ, are you going to be on Trading Wars again? Yes, I will be. I will be on Trading Wars on Monday. Uh, super excited to redeem myself for that. Uh, Trading Wars, I still have to this day the largest single trade win in Trading Wars history and the largest PL of the day because I won four out of five trades on that one show. Um, and it was absolutely ridiculous. The problem with me on Trading Wars is first of all, anytime you're forced to trade, Anytime you're forced to trade, gun to your head, you have to trade, it's not easy. It's not easy at all, uh, even if you're using your techniques, even if you're on small time frames, even, I mean, the market could cough and you could get wrecked. It's not an easy situation. It's definitely more of a game show, and I appreciate that, which is why, you know, I, I live and die by the slogan, get rich or get wrecked. And on Trading Wars, it's actually very frustrating because some of the other contestants will uh if you get a thousand dollars to trade with they'll do a 100 dollar trade on forex leverage or they'll be in six trades uh that are all 80 dollar trades i'm just like <laughs> what are you doing you know what i mean so i put the entire bag in one trade 18 x leverage go send it because i'm either going to get rich i'm going to win by a mile i'm going to embarrass everybody or i'm going to get liquidated and i have been liquidated a couple of times on trading wars so uh but i do appreciate that it is a game show so i'm not like um your performance on that show when you're forced to trade is not a representation of if you are a good or bad trader or not i feel like over time um the cream will rise to the top hence how crypto face won last season i feel like crypto face won last season because he was the best trader on the show uh, I, I do agree with that. And Crypto Face is my mentor. Crypto Face taught me how to trade. He really did. So, um, and that's why I'm sponsored by Market Cypher. I, I have a good relationship with Crypto Face. I have a good relationship with uh, the Flopping Groper, aka Nick, his brother. Uh, I'm actually doing an interview with Nick, uh, the Flopping Groper, today for a spotlight on Market Cypher as well. So I'm super excited to do that. I'm going to go get a little shaved up, though, at one o'clock right before uh, that interview. I've been getting a little burly over here. Um,. All right, let me check the chat, and then we'll get into the shows here. Uh, yeah, big shout out to Clayton the Great. I appreciate those nice words. Um, four-stroke, yes, Kevin, that bike is a four-stroke. Uh, yeah, Jason Casper is a good – he's a good as well. He's not bad. Um, so I do have – someone mentioned Coinly. I am – right about i just about have the contract worked out with a portfolio tracker i will let you guys know about that on monday uh the next portfolio video with that jada and i do might be pushed back a couple of days as this contract gets works out because i want to use the portfolio tracker in the portfolio video so uh it might be a little bit difficult to make that happen by sunday but i think i could maybe make it happen by wednesday so uh, hopefully i'll get on that all right, so going to jump in to a uh, couple things here. Couple, couple things. All right, first, let's take a quick look at the crypto market itself. Also, before I do that, I got 155 people in the house today. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. Make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, let's get a fresh refresh here on CoinGecko. We got Bitcoin, 70,300, Ethereum, 3,500, Solana, 189, XRP, 63 cents. Dogecoin 21 up 46% on the week. Not bad. Actually scooped up a bunch of Doge around 14 cents. You have to understand with projects like Doge, when, when projects like Doge start to move, Doge starts to rip. And right when it started to wake up, I said, uh-huh, buying a couple thousand of that already has worked out pretty well. All right. So um, TonCoin has been moving very well. Keep an eye on TonCoin, everybody. It's kind of hard to ignore. Uh, Matic right at a dollar, ICP of 36 on the week. So like I said, you know, when we had that little crash down that the previous highs from a couple of weeks back, those those previous highs become targets, okay? And that has certainly been the case for a lot of coins. And the thing is, a lot of coins have not got back to those targets yet. For example, uh, before I show you the gainers and the losers, the graph hasn't gone back to 50. Algorand hasn't got back to 26 or uh, was it 30 or 32? I forget its local high. Uh, HBAR is not back to where it was too. You know, a lot of the coins that we follow, there have been some coins that have got past that local high 
uh, ICP, but those coins are the exception and not the rule. So we're definitely trying to isolate those coins that uh, have not got back to those local highs yet. But, you know, I, I, I will show you why I've been leaning a little bit bearish. Um, not like long term, but, you know, I, I'm big on scalp trading. Uh, if you join my Telegram group, I will teach you how to scalp trade systematically. Uh, you know, it takes a long time to to really get it the whole picture. But once you get the whole picture, you really start to see how you make it work for you all the time. So that has been a work in progress as well. But I have been leaning into a lot of sh uh, short scalp trades. And a lot of people have been making a lot of money on that over on Telegram. So let's take a quick look at the gainers and the losers here. Let's just look at the top 100. Uh, we have Dog Whiff up 13%. That has been a coin I've been targeting a lot in the group. Uh, why? Because it's super volatile. Uh, we have Filecoin up 10, Litecoin up 10. Hey, Litecoin moved, everybody. Give it a round of applause. Uh, Gate, Celestia, Ethereum Classic, BNB, VeChain almost back to $0.05. Cents. Would love to see VeChain get back to $0.05. Cents. Anytime you buy VeChain and it's under $0.05, cents, you are doing very well. Ordi has woken up a little bit and all these coins are like 3% up. Nothing crazy at all. And the losers, we have Bonk, Fetch. Interesting to see Fetch down. Singularity Nets also down. The graph down. The graph is down, but still above 40 cents. Uh, maybe we'll take a quick look at the graph chart in a little bit while. And Phantom down 3%. Actually called a short on Phantom last night in the Telegram group when Phantom was at three, And I think it went to 97 or 98. So not bad little scalp trade there for the Telegram group. Anybody who got in that trade definitely took a win on that one. So love to see it. Love to see it when your calls work out. Not a bad thing. So I, you know, I do want to, uh, you know, kind of talk about, uh, you know, we are about to go into April, you know, and um, I, I I know a lot of people do the <clears throat> the coins I'm bullish on for February. My picks for March, you know, like you see those videos a lot. I think I should start making it. Everyone else is making them. Why don't I make one? Uh, I'm not going to make it right now, but I do want to point out, uh, you know, should we be bullish on April? Should we uh, be going into this month thinking we're about to make a shitload of money? Well, let's look at the historical data monthly for April. So this right here is, you know, kind of the, the chart for Bitcoin over time. And as you can see, April. So starting. So really from 2013, we went green, red, red, and then one, two, three, four, five, five big green months and then red, red, and one small green month. And you know what's interesting? I know this isn't much of a pattern. Isn't much of a pattern, but look at this. In 14 and 15, we went red, red, small green. Red, red, small green. And then the next four were big greens. Red, red, small green. And now we have red, red, small green. Okay, I know that doesn't really mean much. But I'm thinking April could be a big, big old winner. It is very possible. But to be fair, to be fair, the same counter argument is if you look at 2021, which was the bull run, by the way, 14%, 36%, 29% red. And if you look uh, like green, 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 red in 2021, 2024, green, green, green. But 2023 was green, 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 green. So you know, there, you know, it, 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 it's, it doesn't really matter. But I always just like to look at it just to get a feel for like if, if because like September, September for instance, September has always been a bloody month, like always. You know what I mean? But uh, there are months that you know, uh, like February for instance, or have notoriously been green months, and uh, April has been more green than red. So you know, I, I am leaning. Based just based off the historical chart, I would say the likelihood of April being a, a net positive for Bitcoin is pretty strong. And leading into that, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a green month in April and a red month in May, as May has, you know, in the past three years has just kicked us down and spit on us when it was done. Uh, you know, the sell in May walk away sale. Um, so that has happened, you know, uh, through the past three years in a row. So I, I'm, um, I'm, I think we could have a green April, but I wouldn't be surprised if we have a red May. So that's just a, it's just a guess, you know, historical data. It doesn't correlation is not causation. No one can see the future, but we can react to the market and make educated, um, you know, decisions based off of that. So Ernesto Flores, are you going to do an updated V chain price prediction video? Uh, thank you, Ernesto, for the $5 super chat. I really appreciate it. 
100,000%, I will do an updated V chain price prediction. Um, 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 um. Algo Python updates. Yeah, Python live on Algo. It's it's Algo Kit 2.0 is alive and well. It's it's rolling. It's happening right now. If you're a developer, head over to the Algorand Foundation twi Twitter and get yourself involved. All right. So we talked about all the giveaways. We talked about the markets. We talked about historical data on Bitcoin. Um, this is a pretty interesting story here. Going to run through a couple of stories and then we will get into the charts. Um, but Okay, so crypto traders bet $2.4 million on a spot Ethereum ETF decision. 19% of the gamblers betting on the outcome on a decision on whether to approve or deny the, Bitcoin, the Ethereum spot ETF by May, by the May deadline. So this is actually really interesting. This, where they're doing this is a Polygon-based crypto gambling site called Polymarket. Poly market. This is not a paid ad. This is not, they're not paying me to say this. Poly market is cool. Poly market rips. It is super rad. You have to VPN in. Uh, you have to obviously convert what you do. You convert your USDC to the Polygon network. And then you start, you open your account and then you ship that USDC to this wallet and it funds your account. I know this, I bet it on the Super Bowl, on the Super Bowl um, that on Poly Market. And I also bet that the Chiefs would win in overtime. And the Chiefs won in overtime. We, we made so much money that day, not bad, not bad. But yeah, so Poly Market, it, it's a really cool place to look at because if you think like, you know, that if you have a hunch that it's going to get approved by May, you could jump in, bet on that, and you have really good odds because the odds are based off of how many people are betting yes or no. You got 19% chance, so you'd have really good odds on that. Or if you think that you know there's no way it's going to get approved by May, you could bet bigger on no, and it would be smaller odds, but you would still win. You know, so so even if the odds aren't like really good odds, you could still win money if it's a no brainer to you that it's not going to get approved by May. So, you know, they are, you know, have bet, like I said, over $2.4 million on this already. I mean, that, that's a lot of money for, um, you know, a bet on poly market also proof that poly market as a prediction betting site has been moving. Uh, so, you know, it's also, it's the cool thing about poly market is that you can bet on anything. You can actually submit things to get that on. Uh, you can bet on politics. You can bet on who will win the election. You will. You can bet on football. You can bet on fights. You can bet on will crypto. Will Bitcoin be eighty thousand by July? You, you can bet on anything. It is super cool. The uh, big shout out. Big shout out to that to that site. Once again, it is called Poly Market. Uh, so basically, you, you get on the Polygon blockchain on your MetaMask and then use your MetaMask browser. Uh, with a VPN on, and you can get into Poly Market and just check it out. You don't have to bet or anything. It's not a paid ad. I just think it's a really cool. It's a, it's awesome. It's awesome. I I check it out all the time. I look at it all the time. Um, uh, let me decline this here. So, got to touch on this for a second. SBF. I know this was the talk of the town yesterday, but of course, I was out of commission yesterday. Uh, got sentenced twenty five years in prison. Doesn't necessarily mean that he will do. 25 full years in prison but that was his sentence uh you know he he also did like a, a little speech to the court apparently that was like somewhat moving um you know he said that he like you know obviously feels terrible and he knows he made a bad decision and um you know there's absolutely no doubt that mr bankman fried's name right now is pretty much mud around the world which is completely true uh, I don't want to beat this up too much, but, you know, uh, I think the the crime fits the bill, in my opinion. Uh, do I think someone as smart as SBF should rot away in jail? No, nope. no, I don't. I don't think he should got life. I hope he only does, uh, you know, 10 to 15 years. Um, uh, I obviously feel for anybody who lost money obviously they are they are making efforts to pay people back but the way i see it this is the way i see it is that he's too smart of a person to rot away uh you think of the movie catch me if you can how leonardo dicaprio ended up helping tom hanks preventing what 
he said, from happening again. I would like to see something similar to SBF do that. Uh, to be fair, to be fair, I did talk yesterday on the phone for to Crypto Wendy Yo. I talked to her for probably 30 minutes on the phone yesterday. Wendy Yo, as 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 I do want to say, is like my crypto mother. Uh, I call her for advice. I call her just to talk. I call her just to say hello, just because uh, I, I I really appreciate. Uh, how she's really helped me along the way. She's she's cool as they come. She's you know one of my best friends I've made in crypto, and um, you know we just talk sometimes, you know. And we talked about SBF at length yesterday. And her opinion is that you know SBF, uh, he he's habitual liar. He's he's a psych he's he's a psychopath, and that no matter what. She does. She disagrees with me. She doesn't think that he should do something similar to Leonardo DiCaprio and Catch Me If You Can because she thinks that he will just find another way to con. He will find another way to steal and he's unreliable and he can't be trusted. And that's true, too. You know what I mean? So, um, you just, you know, it's just um, anytime you see someone that smart just mess up that much, it is a bummer. But let's see. Um, let's see how it works out for Sam. Hopefully he somehow turns it around to become a net positive for the world because he knows that right now his life is a big net negative and maybe he can find a way to turn it around so all right going to keep it moving here i'm not going i'm going to bitcoin nashville but i'm not moving to nashville um i'm, 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 I'm not selling my xrp even though it's sound asleep when will you do the v chain price prediction in probably a couple weeks probably a couple weeks um yeah, 25 years is a light sentence. He's 32. He will be out when he's 57. You know, and the crazy thing about that is I am 32. I could not imagine going to going down for 25 right now. No way. No way. I obey the laws. <laughs> when I drive and I see a stop sign, I come to a complete stop and I say, okay, sign. Okay. And I keep driving. Like I am not getting in any trouble. No way. And I agree. He probably is just a fall guy. Probably, probably is. All right, let's keep the ball rolling here. We do have about 185 people in the house right now. Thank you all for being here. Make sure you smash the like button if you haven't already. And remember how I was talking about, uh, you know, the, the the picks for April, the April coins. Well, this website, Cryptopolitan, uh, is shilling a coin called Blast Up. Have no idea what it is. But then they were talking about Avalanche, Polkadot, and Optimism, and Jupiter. So five picks there. Uh, I don't really hate though. I think Jupiter isn't a bad call. Uh, I think optimism, I think steady. I think that's a really good word to use to describe optimism is a steady move. I'm not much on polka dot and I have been buying more and more avalanche as time goes on. So three out of those five, I actually don't, I don't mind those picks at all. Um, we did talk about this a little bit on Wednesday. I wasn't really that privy to the story at the time, but now uh, I, I completely see it. So these AI tokens were all up 30 this week. They're actually down now amidst the plans to merge. So the so the rumor goes, Fetch AI, Singularity Net, and Ocean Protocol are all preparing to vote to, on merging together. I read another story yesterday that if these three projects were to merge into one super coin, the market cap would be over 7.4 billion. Very, very interesting. Here's the tweet, as mentioned from some people in the chat back on Wednesday. Just wanted to fill this in for anybody who doesn't know. The Super Intelligence Alliance, that's a really good name, will be a powerhouse of decentralized AI uniting years of R&D, innovation, and entrepreneurial spirit. This is a tweet by Fetch.ai, by the way. The road ahead is brighter than ever. In case you missed the details, be sure to check out this blog right here. I will uh, copy and paste this blog in the chat if you want to learn more about this story. But long story short, I think the, the ticker will be ASI if they merge all together. And uh, I, I feel like that is uh, that's bullish. That's bullish. I, I, I would get involved on that, especially. I mean, all three of these projects are absolutely amazing. So uh, I would not be against that. I, I think it's smart, really, because like uh, I always feel like a house divided can't stand. You know, I, I always I really feel that a lot of projects are doing the same thing. And uh, obviously there is a lot of Darwinism in crypto. Uh, if you don't believe that there's there's certainly Darwinism in crypto survival of the fittest. All right. And uh, I think this is, you know, them kind of addressing the fears of longevity saying, you know, we're all doing the same thing here. And one of us, you know, we might not all make it, but if we get together, maybe we can in a big way. I think that's mature. 
of them. You know, I, I'm not saying those projects aren't good. I think all three of those projects would probably be sustainable just fine. But the thought that they're thinking together, you know, there has to be some fear behind that decision if you really think about it. So that's an interesting, interesting take, interesting take. And maybe there will be uh, more, more, um, mergers to come in the future you have, you have we have no idea but i think it could become a trend for sure it could become a trend oh man just just look at it damn so excited brah, 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 brah. so excited all right let's do some ta everybody we got about 20 minutes left on the show want to take a quick look at this chart if this chart right here with all this stuff on it means nothing to you at all if you have no idea what anything is going on in this chart, if you don't know how to chart, you don't know how to set alarm, you don't know how to do TA, you don't know how to be in the right coins at the right time, I can help you out. I have a Telegram group just started last Monday. Uh, we are going on to week two. Monday, this Monday will be week two. Uh, it, and it, it is moving along very well. Already have over 70 people in the group not bad for the first week i'm super excited i love getting all the messages like dude this group already paid for itself i did a really big trade now i can pay my car off like thank you so much seeing those messages just like you guys amazing and i'm glad that there are people catching on really really fast in the group to my strategy and there are some people that don't know how to use trading view that don't know how to do charts. So, you know, for those people, I am going to make a lot like a beginner type content. As you can see, I did a video about how I use TradingView and all the indicators I use. That video came out earlier this week. I also did a Femex tutorial for anybody who doesn't know how to trade on Femex. I am going to be doing some intro videos, uh, tutorial type stuff to help out the beginners for sure. Uh, but I do want to try my best to educate as many people as I can and catch them up to speed. And if you want to get involved in the Telegram group, it is not expensive at all compared to the other groups that I've been in in the past. Uh, just send me an email. You can see it right down below, ajalphagroup at gmail.com. We will get you set up and we will have you winning trades in no time. So let's take a quick overview on Bitcoin here. BTC. Let me get a chart that's not all uh, just covered in everything. All right, let's get rid of the high IQ. Let's get rid of the Nadaria Watson envelope. Uh, we'll leave the EMA and market cipher B on for now. So let's start with the daily chart. So and I, will, I would like a volume profile as well. Okay, much better. So I mean, Bitcoin's in kind of a weird spot. Bitcoin's in kind of a weird spot. First of all, I don't mind if you pay attention to market cipher B, the consistent money flow. You see how Bitcoin, like it, it, it curved up, right? And it kind of started down, but it never went to the red. It's kind of just like consistent inflow of money. Uh, definitely a, a side effect of, you know, the ETF. Uh, that's not a surprise to me at all. I mean, Bitcoin does have a very consistent inflow of money right now. Uh, when you consider the distance between any time the price action gets far above the 50 EMA, which is this red line right here, you will always see, especially on a daily chart, the price, you know, kind of get back to that, get to that line, you know, that that line which right here, you know, Bitcoin fell 12% over the course of five days, uh, retesting that 50 EMA. And, you know, what you see is, you know, it's above the EMA. Sometimes it'll test the EMA and bounce off it. And sometimes it'll come all the way down and test the 200. And when the 50 crosses the 200 the other way, that is called a death cross. And that's, you know, indicates the beginning of bearish uh, continuation. So as you can see here, uh, this move right here was, you know, the Bitcoin testing the 50 EMA on the daily chart. But now we are kind of in this weird in between where we do have space between the 50 day EMA and the Bitcoin price. But but this is what is scaring me at the moment is that, you know, we do not want. So right now, Bitcoin's local high, actually all time high is around 73,000. Some places say 74,000. It kind of bounces around from place to place. But, you know, this is the line on this chart that represents Bitcoin's all time high. And also, if you notice the curvature of this oscillator here, it is kind of curving over and there is like a lot of volume kind of below and there's not much volume above because, you know, we are in price discovery. So, you know, I, I would really not like to see if we kind of zoom in here on like an eight hour then see this right here. We have a 17 negative five on the market cipher dual band strength index, a very, very useful indicator that I use on market cipher that is uh, it works very well on larger time frames. Uh, so basically, 
I think it's from negative five to 26, I believe the range is. And any number above a 14 is a, is a strong degree of certainty. So we have right here, we have a 17 negative five to the downside. So if the bigger number is on top, that's pushing it down. But say if it was like a negative five uh, and then it was like a 14 like that, that would have it going up. You know what I'm saying? But the larger number is on top. So this is indicating that there's a strong degree of certainty on the eight hour chart that Bitcoin is going to continue down based off of the dual band strength index. That is just one indicator, but I do take it into consideration, not to mention, you know, Bitcoin kind of had a little bit of a of a little bearish divergence here with this, you know, pumping up with a, a slightly higher high and this pumping down, diverging from the trend of the price action with a slightly lower high. So, you know, there is this idea on the eight hour as well. But what we really don't want to see is Bitcoin kind of start, you know, somewhat of a downtrend. Um, and so far, I mean, we don't really have the points plotted yet, but if you went off of this downtrend like this, it would be a broadening descending, uh, channel like that. But I don't, I don't think that's going to be the plot, the point we actually end up plotting. Uh, what would make sense if that, if this came down here, uh, where's my brush, if, if this wiggled down here like this, we would use that. It would, it would probably be more like this. Uh, once this put puts in a low. So, you know, based off of this idea, I'm not really a big fan of, you know, going long on Bitcoin right here, right now. Uh, this is an eight hour chart. This is a larger time frame. Keep that in mind. But, you know, we do want to consider like, is there a slight, you know, it, the, the first lower high is the beginning of a downtrend on a large time frame. And, uh, you know, there are a couple levels here that Bitcoin still has to lose before like that really becomes an official thing. Um, and even here with the momentum oscillator kind of on the four hour going lower, higher, lower like that, you know, we really don't want to see that. Ooh, let me go back to the four hour here. But so levels. So right here is this support resistance level has been you know tested time and time and time and time again, uh, even even from back here. Right. So. I mean, this level has been flirted with a lot on Bitcoin. This level is 68,272. So basically 68,300, basically very close to it. Uh, would really like to see Bitcoin hold this level up, uh, particularly because it's the the this low here. I mean, just because Bitcoin's curving over doesn't mean it can't go blah, blah, blah and break out. That's not, you know, I'm not saying it can't, but you want to be aware of when Bitcoin changes its levels. OK, so like if you go off this local high here off the previous high, which would be seventy one thousand seven hundred, uh, you know, you would want to if you wanted to monitor Bitcoin's price action, you'd want to set an alarm on that level. And then you would want to set an alarm on this level. So you will know when Bitcoin breaks one way or the other out of this little channel that it's in right here right now. So, uh, you know, it, larger time frames do point to the downside. Uh, that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Uh, I've seen really, really bearish charts completely turn around before. But when you consider how hard Bitcoin pumped and then you consider that it you know, is getting rejected, look how many times this level has been rejected. So it didn't even get to it here. One, wicked up to it. Two, three. I mean, this level has been very hard. Uh, the 71,700 know, level has been very difficult for Bitcoin to get above. So um, you know, right here, right now, I, I'm a little weary, a little bit weary on Bitcoin. And you know, also, so I talk about this a lot. Um, you guys really need to be plugged in on the total charts. Okay. And what I mean by total charts. So the total chart talked about this in the telegram group yesterday. The total chart is all of crypto slammed together in one chart, the total market cap. The total two chart is all of crypto slammed together without Bitcoin. And the total three chart is all of crypto slammed together without Bitcoin or Ethereum. Keep in mind, stable coins are included for all three charts. But if you're just trying to focus on trading altcoins, you do want to be you know, hyper aware of uh, Bitcoin dominance. You want to be aware of the Bitcoin chart itself. You want to be aware of the stock market and you want to be aware of the dollar. All four of those charts are relevant. But today I want to focus on the total three chart because that chart is the altcoins that we're actually targeting. So my point here is, so we kind of have this slightly lower high idea with Bitcoin, right? So now we're going to click on the total three chart. All right. And this has been what has been concerning me. It has turned around since last night. 
to be fair, it has turned around since last night. Uh, let's actually look at like the eight hours. So we kind of have like the in between here. And to my surprise, this thing has turned around. So this level right here, 7,077, oh my God, 770 and a half billion. That has been the local top for the altcoin chart. Uh, it has turned around. Yesterday when I was looking at this, it was like kind of down here. You know, I was kind of thinking double top idea. And it could be still a double top idea. It has to break this level. So, you know, for the total three chart to monitor the altcoins, you're going to want to set that local high level at the top of that wick and alarm up on that bad boy for sure. All right. So got my alarm set right there. So I always keep this chart in mind. And also when you look at like the eight hour and you consider, I mean, first of all, look how far this thing has come uh, in a very short amount of time. If you talk, you know, bull run type numbers in crypto, uh, this is kind of what you'll think of. This is what you'll see. I mean, we're talking since the little uh, lull uh, in January to now. Uh, we have, oh my gosh, uh, we've want, we've gone from 445 billion to 756 billion, a 69.8 percent pump for the total three chart, and that is very significant. Keep in mind, the total three chart is all of crypto without Bitcoin or Ethereum included. Uh, and we kind of go back in history. Let's go back. Let's take a little walk down memory lane here and look at the weekly. OK, so why is this level? Yeah, I'll get rid of that. Why is oh, not that this? Boom. OK, so I do have this overhead level here and we have not got to this level. The level I am talking about is this one right here. OK, we haven't got that yet. Why does that matter? Because this has been a support resistance level several times along the journey and that lot that level really separates you know the the tippy top that value area from you know the rest of it you know what i mean it has it has made a big push but we need to get over that 820 billion dollar level on the altcoins and if you kind of go back in history you will see like this this pump right here this pump right here you see it had this big push up had this big push up and then it shakes out and goes further I feel like that is kind of what is happening with crypto right now. Keep in mind, from top to bottom, this drop was 59%. It took 77 days for it to happen. Now, if we kind of clean this chart up, uh, you know, kind of ignore the support resistance lines. I mean, keep in mind, this, this pump looks kind of similar to this one. It does look kind of similar to this one. So I do feel that there will be a time where we kind of have that shakeout and then we'll put in a lower high. And then, you know, we will, you know, continue up. That will happen eventually. Okay. When no one knows, no one can see the future, but we can use the tools we have to make a educated prediction. All right. So what I'm saying here is that this local high absolutely has to, has to, has to get beat. It, it just has to. Okay. If we can put in a higher high here, I, I will feel much better about going long on all coins much better about going long on all coins but we have to get above this previous high from back here and then maybe you know from there what we could do say we get above that high then we could you know use that as support resistance and continue to crawl because really it's it's not so much when the rejection will happen it's where the rejection will happen on the total three chart because if we get rejected below this line here below this line i would not feel good about that I would not feel good about that because like I said, this line is the difference between the value area high and the value area low. So if we, and this is why getting above this level is so important because we want to crawl up here and then get rejected. If we can crawl up here and then get rejected and continue up, it's just, it's just a much more sound play mathematically speaking. So yeah, keep a close eye on the total three because it literally is the reflection of all the altcoins that we are trading. So keep that in mind. You know, there is a slightly lower high idea on um, slightly lower high idea on Bitcoin. You know, the total three chart has not put in a new high yet. That could still be a double top idea. Kind of got some old uh, setups here all throughout this phantom chart. Looking at the two hour here on phantom did call last night uh, around 102, a short for phantom. Uh, yeah, right around here. Yeah, we're up about 3.3% on that. But hey, if you use 10x leverage, you know, that's 33%. Not bad. I have been using between 5 to 10x leverage on all of my trades here as of late. So, you know, the thing with Phantom is that consider this support resistance line. 
This one right here, uh, this level is at 96 cents. And that is also, if you consider that on the two hour chart, the 200 EMA is actually above that support resistance line. So in a world where uh, the total three chart can continue above that line, I would not be surprised to see Phantom bounce off. There would, I mean, this was obviously a scalp short. Uh, but I would not be su that surprised to see Phantom bounce off this and fight back up. But, you know, that remains to be seen because right now, uh, you know, locally, Phantom has been slightly, you know, kind of coming down the hill here. Uh, if you kind of consider, you know, a little, little kind of channel like this. So, it, 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 and to be fair, it is a part of a larger uptrend if you want to get technical about it. You know, we do have, you know, kind of this as well. But we also kind of lost these levels as well. So, um it's six one half dozen the other when it comes to that particular thing. But what's really interesting about Phantom right here, right now, is that I mean, think about how he look at this price action over here. See how it continues to bounce off the 50 day EMA, continues to bounce off the 50 day EMA. That is a clear and cut sign of bullish continuation. All right. And look at the money flow. Look at the money flow. See how it wasn't heavy green, but you know, stays green. And you see how the momentum oscillators stay above above that line how they how they don't come below here you know how it stays above that is a very clear sign of bullish continuation on market cipher but now look at this the price is below the price is below the 50 ema the the oscillator is below the 50 line we're in the red on the money flow so the conditions have changed on phantom to be fair bullish divergence right there straight up Okay, but that does not guarantee much. Okay, so I have have a very close eye on this 96 cent level. That is the the big alarm. I think I have it set on another chart, but I'm going to set it on this chart just in case um, just to make sure I have that level set, because if we lose 96 cents on Phantom, you best believe AJ Wright's crypto is going short in a big way in a big way but yeah i would like to see it get back above that ema and also phantom has a lot a lot a lot of news coming uh in the springtime the sonic upgrade so uh, i talk about phantom a lot because it's a chart i understand it's a chart that i can tap time and time and time and time and time again uh to consistently make money on you find your coins that you gravitate towards and if you start to understand how it fluctuates, there are some charts that I just throw my hands up. I'm not going to trade this coin because I don't understand it. And I would rather be well, not like well, well informed about a coin that I can hit, 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 hit for good trade after good trade after good trade than try to, you know, then try to do something in a place where that's not, that's outside of my wheelhouse. You know what I mean? It's out, if it's outside of your wheelhouse, it's outside of your wheelhouse. And unless you really want to take the time to, to study it, you could just keep winning on the on the chart you're winning on. A um, couple other coins I want to look at here before we call it a week. Um, a whiff, man. Oh my god, this thing has no chill. To be fair, we have caught a lot of scalp shorts on the whiff chart in the Telegram group. But right now, I mean, this is kind of the story with whiff right now. Would be this level, uh, this previous high. And also, even on small time frames, even on a two hour on time frame, this is why triangles are so important. This is why triangles are so important. You know, kind of had a not exactly symmetrical triangle here, but you know, it was putting in lower lows paired with higher highs, you know, for a while there. And you know, this breakout right here actually was a kind of a tricky breakout. You know why? Because then this I, I've been seeing this more and more as time goes on. You'll see the chart break out of the line. But then it will actually lean on the line lower. So we say we we catch the you know this breakout here. We would actually would have lost you know five percent before the move really happened. And this is why you know. And this is this chart has been very deceiving to trade as well. You know why? Look at this. Look at this. If you're going off of this breakout, say you had this triangle set up and you were trying to you know long long the breakout. We get the breakout right. If you were just trying to baby scalp it, you know, from the breakout, you, know, you could have got, you know, 6%, 6.5%. But then, if for the people that are waiting for confirmation, it, it hits this line again, it pops up again 7%, it comes back down 8% before it pops off. All right. And look how many times it crossed that trend line. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And if you have it on once per beat, it will go off each time it crosses each direction. So that alarm went off 20 times before you had the right trade there. So my point here is you really, really have to be patient. You really have to be consistent. And what would have done it for me, uh, probably either this level, the breakout of this level, or the breakout of this level. Because once we get above the chart and then it starts to retrace, you have to find those support resistance levels. And if you were to long from here, you know that could have been your confirmation. So uh, there's a lot more to it than having a triangle, setting the alarm, alarm go off, break out. Uh, it is not that simple, especially when you're trading with high leverage. To be fair, if you were trading with shorter leverage and you just wanted to ride it out and you broke it out and you just wrote it out for four days, I mean, you, you, you would have caught the entire move. But some people trading on very high leverage, you know, that 3% dent that it fluctuates time and time again. I mean, that's a big swing. So, you know, you do have to keep that in mind. You got to keep that in mind. Uh, but right here, right now, man, this thing has been moving along very well. It's in a very aggressive uptrend. The price is very high above the 50 EMA. Uh, we are coming down on the oscillator on the two hour, but the price is still moving upwards at the moment. Uh, coming to the 12 minute chart is kind of where things really start to get a little bit hairy. Um, I mean, this thing has yet to really even come close to testing the 200, uh, and, and the price is still above the, uh, 50 EMA. So it, it, you know, you could go short on this right now, but be ready for this to be a rocky ride. Uh, if you go short on it now, even if you wanted to go short, because remember this level right here, this level right here is the previous high is the recent all time high before it put in the new one. Okay. So, I mean, and look at bouncing off this level, bouncing off this level. So with a, you know, kind of coming into the red on the money flow, coming down on the oscillator, got a 15, negative three on the dual band strength index. Uh, you know, a lot of volume down here. And it's actually interesting on a low volume node to here as well. So if you wanted to try to short uh, to the uh, to that support resistance line, you could get a nice 5% trade there. But it, like I said, it's going to be a rocky ride if you get in that short, but not saying it can't work out. What would be interesting is if and when we lose that level. If we lose this level here, keep in mind we have this low volume node over here. So say uh, if you went short from the current point in time and wrote it out past the low volume node, you'd probably be looking at like a 10% short back to the 330, 332 level. Or if you waited for a break of this level to that low volume node, you'd still catch like a 5.5% trade there. So definitely some ideas on whiff right here, but it is really hard to scalp a coin that is moving as much as this coin is, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot of liquidity on uh, WIF right now on Femex and other lever trading sites as well. When a coin has that much liquidity, it's going to be a rocky ride on the trade no matter what, but uh, I, I feel like a, a test back down to that support resistance level, which where exactly is that support resistance level at 352? Wouldn't be surprised to see a, a retest of 352, even if it does continue forward after that. So awesome. There you go. Well, you guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, I will be posting some some more setups in the Telegram group, uh, and I'll even put one or two setups in the Pulse, Femex Pulse chat um, later today. Basically, um, very busy day. I have a haircut at one. I am interviewing with the flopping groper at three, which is market uh, like a market cipher interview, a spotlight. And then after that, uh, I have a, to film a video. So I am going to be posting. I'm going to be posting in the Telegram group probably in like an hour or two. And then I'll probably circle back and do another post at night. I do trade at night a lot. Um, I, I A lot of times I trade between like 10 p.m. and midnight. Uh, is a is a time I'm really so there will be like kind of some like 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. type posts in the Telegram group. But if, hey, if an alarm goes off, if I see something, I'm going to be in there letting you guys know what I'm seeing. So uh, if you want to sign up for that, email down below ajalphagroup at gmail.com. Um, super excited tomorrow. Don't forget about these uh, giveaways, everybody. There are a handful of open giveaways right here, right now, in terms of. Um, what am I? What am I doing on Twitter? Uh, definitely check out Lingo Coins if you haven't already. Also, this tweet here for the Femex video promotion. Two people that like and retweet this tweet will win a hundred dollars in PT token. And the other one is uh, the H Bar. I am interviewing the CEO of the H Bar Foundation, Shane Higdon. 
uh, next Wednesday. And if you submit the best question for the interview, you'll win $100 in HBAR as well. And not to mention, coming with the V-Chain interview with Sonny Lou coming out tomorrow, there will be a V-Chain merch and a vet giveaway attached to that promotional video as well so there you go want to give back to the community you guys are absolutely amazing make sure you smash the like button if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it i hope all of you have a fun safe exciting great weekend uh i cannot wait to watch the race tomorrow going to be an amazing race i believe it's in st louis super excited about that might might come riding home on my new bike this weekend might be a week out. Not 100% sure about that, but I am soaked on that as well. Uh, big shout out to Smokestream in the in the chat. If you don't learn something new every day, you slacken. That is facts. That is absolute facts. If you're watching this show and you are new into crypto, you need to have a pen and a piece of paper and you need to be taking vigilant notes. If I say something you don't know, if you don't know what a, vid a visible range volume profile is, if you don't know what a Bollinger Band is, you know, if you don't know what a moving average convergence divergence is, if you don't know what a stochastic RSI is, if you don't know what these things are and how to use them, you're missing out on making money. I'm trying as hard as I can to teach this audience how to make life-changing money in crypto. It sounds great when I say it out loud. It sounds really good, but guess what? You still have to put in the work. You still have to put in the legwork. You still have to learn the things I know. You can't just take the positions and trade. You have to conceptually understand why the trade is working. I want you to learn how to fish for yourself. And to get to that point, that is when you get the new house, you get the new car, you buy the new KTM motorcycle, you get the things. Okay. So, you know, I, I want to be not just an example. I also want to be the person that helps you get there. I want people to look back and, and, you know, and, and, and have this be an integral part of their step up like other creators were for me. If it wasn't for Bitbull Crypto, if it wasn't for Crypto Wendy O, if it wasn't for Crypto Face, you know, if it wasn't for Carl the Moon, people like that. I wouldn't be here. The boys at All Coin Daily you have to mention them as well. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those people. And I want to be the next person to pull more people up and have the circle of of crypto continue. That's what it's all about, um, you know. And I and you cannot keep what you have unless you give it away. That is facts. Okay. So I, I am really giving it hell, and I hope to um, to teach you all as much as I can. And I hope you hope you run with it, man. I hope you run with it. I I, I want you guys to take the next step. You know, I hope you guys take the next step. And uh, if you need flashcards, hey, I think that's a good idea. It's a great idea. Crypto flashcards. I could I could make those in like a day. That's a killer idea. Good point. All right. Going to write some flashcards for Karen. <laughs> I don't know how. I got to like find a way to like monetize that. That'd be a really good idea. Damn, Karen. I might have to throw you a, a, a chunk of that because I think I might do that. <laughs> killer. Killer. All right. I'm, I'm blabbling. Uh, you guys are amazing. I love you all. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. My name's AJ Rice Crypto. Get rich. Get wrecked. Arf, arf, arf. Shout out to the Sappy Seals. Peace.